What did Bren Smith do after a hurricane wiped out his farm? He decided to dive a bit deeper. Bryn Smith isn't your typical farmer in more ways than one. For one thing, he farms oysters and mussels, and for another, he's trying to transform farming by creating a new model for other farmers to follow that can increase yields while minimizing the environmental impact of farming. And it's all thanks to a disaster. See, at your typical oyster farm, you'd essentially plant young oysters in the muddy area in a bay and wait for a couple of years so that they grow into adulthood before harvesting them. Then you'd use large rakes to dig them up. But the hurricane that passed over Smith's farm destroyed his entire crop for a season. That's when he decided to go vertical. You might remember we talked about vertical farms in a previous episode, but this time we're going underwater with it. Smith's innovation is to build vertical farms deeper in the ocean, where the surge from a hurricane won't wreak havoc. His farms look very different from traditional oyster farms. At the ocean surface, you'd see pairs of large floats connected to each other with long floating ropes as a series of horizontal lines. Beneath the water, those floats are anchored to their respective spots with hurricane-proof anchors, and suspended from the ropes are the vertical farms themselves, on which grow kelp and varieties of seaweed. It doesn't stop there. Suspended between columns of kelp are lantern-like mesh nets containing scallops and other mussels. At the sea floor, oyster cages anchor those nets so that they stay vertical in the flow of the ocean. And beneath the oyster cages are clam beds. Because the farms are vertical, they don't take up much square footage on the ocean floor itself. Smith has learned how to maximize farm yields while reducing his farm's footprint. He started off with a 100-acre farm, but reduced it to 20 acres while producing far more food. It's a system that works. It's also an open system, meaning Smith decided to share his design with the world in an effort to encourage other farmers to adopt it. He does this with the hopes of not only helping other farmers who might otherwise find themselves at the whim of the elements, but also to help establish a more sustainable approach to harvesting oysters and other shellfish. He also hopes that he can convince you to eat like a fish. The process of fishing can be environmentally harmful. Overfishing hurts fish populations, and you often end up disrupting delicate ecosystems in the process. Smith's argument is that we could enjoy the healthy benefits of a fish-rich diet by instead dining on the same stuff they chow down on, namely kelp and other plants that grow in the sea. These plants are rich in nutrients like vitamin C, calcium, and protein. They are easy to grow in an environmentally conscious way, and they even have omega-3 fatty acids, which help maintain a healthy metabolism. In fact, that's where omega-3 rich fish get their supply. They either eat kelp or they eat fish that are eating the kelp we'd be going straight to the source. Smith has said he wants to de sushify seaweed, meaning he wants to see us eat more sea plants in new and innovative dishes. This will help make sea plants a common part of many diets while allowing fish populations to recover from overfishing and environmental damage. According to Smith, if there were enough farms like his to equal the size of Washington State, the farms would collectively produce enough food to feed the entire planet. Sounds like it is better down where it's wetter. Question time. What solution would you propose to help grow food in a sustainable, environmentally friendly way? I want to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks to Toyota for sponsoring this episode. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button down there and be sure to subscribe to the channel to join the forward-thinking think tank. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to grab a seaweed salad.